let's take a look at an example. And in this example, we can see that switch Z up here, okay, we can see that switch Z has been elected as the root bridge. Nice, congratulations. Why did that happen? Well, all the priorities are at their default, 32768, so it certainly couldn't have been a priority manipulation. So as Karen correctly specifies, it's random. It's the lowest MAC address. Yep, Switch Z had the lowest MAC address. Congratulations, Switch Z. Da, 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 da. Is that the presidential song? I don't know. All right, anyways, Switch Z is the king of the hill. Switch Z is the root bridge. Now, what is the second part of this equation? Oh, that was ABC Sports. Okay, thanks, Karen. <laughs> oh, I've got my jingles mixed up. All right. So what is the second part of this equation? All right, well, we've got our root bridge. By default, as you know, all of the ports on the root bridge are designated. Spanning tree goes to each non-root bridge and it does a root port selection. We come up with a designated port on each segment, and whatever is left over is non-designated. You have very much mastered spanning tree protocol, and you're at the fundamental level in Cisco certification. Congratulations. I mean, this is awesome. And now you can talk to people at holiday parties about spanning tree protocol. And they can look at you like you're absolutely crazy. Now remember, the decision on these ports the speed ends up influencing it, doesn't it? Yeah, you better believe it. Specifically, spanning tree will assign costs to certain bandwidths in order to ensure that we are choosing the best possible path in order to move our traffic. Cost is the factor. Now remember, I made this point yesterday, and it's definitely something to think about here. We fabricated some pretty simplistic examples in the class, didn't we? I mean, how many of your networks have 10 base T today? Uh, hmm, none of them? Yeah. So, you know, you'll have fast Ethernet throughout, or you'll have gigabit Ethernet throughout. So what Spanning Tree will end up doing is it'll come up with a tiebreaker. Of course, it comes up with a tiebreaker that will be pretty arbitrary. All right. Now, what if you wanted to move to a rapid spanning tree type of an environment? What if you wanted to eliminate those big delays that we know are built into classic spanning tree protocol? Now, what if you wanted to move to a version of spanning tree protocol that would give you much better convergence? Well, you can go ahead and do that by moving to Cisco's per VLAN 
rapid spanning tree protocol. And it is not hard at all to do this. Not difficult at all. You're going to be amazed at how easy it is to make this transition. Here's what you got to do. You got to make sure that all of your switches are connected together with point to point full duplex connections. That's a no brainer. Of course, we're going to have all of our catalyst switches connected point to point full duplex. That is simple. That is a no brainer. So once we ensure that we can go in and we can make the rapid spanning tree protocol configuration and I'll even give you a little bonus. We will change the topology of our network as we do this. You ready for this? This will be fun. All right, if we do our show spanning tree VLAN one on switch one, what do we learn? We learn that we are the root. We are the root. Now maybe this switch, switch one, is some crappy lower end switch, crappy being the technical term, of course, and I don't want this switch to be the root bridge. What do I do? Well, I'll show you. <laughs> we'll change the priority of one of our neighboring devices. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Before we do that, let's get all of these switches communicating using rapid spanning tree protocol. Spanning tree for, uh, excuse me, spanning tree mode. That's right, and we have our various modes. We want rapid PVST. So we just converted switch one's configuration to rapid per VLAN spanning tree. Did we just have chaos result? Is like, you know, this is crazy. Dogs and cats living together. The other switches are classic spanning tree protocol. Well, let's take a look at our output here. Well, it says that we are truly running rapid spanning tree protocol. We are still the root. And look what happened. Our ports started blocking and transitioned into the learning state. So we just did disrupt some, oh, we didn't disrupt traffic flows. We didn't disrupt traffic flows. The ports didn't go blocking, but they did go into a learning state. The good news is we didn't block any traffic. So they went into a learning state and actually look right here. It's telling us that, hey, just so you know, you're peering with some classic spanning tree devices out there. Yep, so it alerts us that we are peering with some classic spanning tree devices out there in the infrastructure. All right. So if I run this again, you can see that we have left the learning state on our ports and we have transitioned to the forwarding state and, you know, it's letting us know we got some more upgrading to do out there. All right. Well, let's go over to switch two. And we'll say spanning tree mode, rapid per VLAN spanning tree. Switch three. And let me be smart and copy that to the clipboard. And now switch four. Okay. So we have gone and made the mode conversion everywhere. And if we go back to switch one and take a look at the spanning tree, it tells us, ah, yes. We now are no longer 
doing spanning tree protocol in a mixed environment. We, we are running the consistent spanning tree protocol version of rapid per VLAN spanning tree. Okay. Now, let's go back to something that I wanted to do, and that is convert this configuration so that this old crappy router is no longer the root. Yeah, let's convert this so this device is no longer the root device. So what we're going to do is we are going to go over to switch to and make it the root and watch how easy this is to do. Spanning tree for VLAN 1 root primary. Switch to just looked at the priority value of all of its neighboring switches and it set its priority value so that it would be lower. And it took over as the root. Span uh, Switch 2 is now the root. It lowered its priority value to 24576, lower than the default of 32798. It, of course, added the VLAN identifier of 1, so its priority is 24577, and that is low enough to get the job done. We have taken over as root, and all of our ports are now designated and in the forwarding state. This device actually had a blocking port before we made this change. Andrew says, what was the command again? The command was spanning tree VLAN 1 root primary. Spanning tree VLAN 1 root primary. Let's go down to switch 3 and make it the secondary root. This device will take over if something happens to switch to. Let's see the change that made on switch three. It is now 28672. Slightly uh, in between 32768 and the 24576. So its priority has been magically adjusted so that if there is a problem with switch two, switch three will take over as the root device. So this is the easy way to set different switches to be the root bridge for different VLANs. Yep. Can you set the priority directly? Sure. You could say spanning tree, VLAN 1, priority, and then you could give your bridge priority in increments of 4096, but why do it that way? It's too, it's, it's harder. Why not just go ahead and use the root primary and root secondary commands in order to get the job done? So, we have embarked on a really cool journey looking at spanning tree protocol. Yeah, and by the way, I should give credit where credit is due. 
spanning tree protocol was invented by the mother of the internet, I think they call her. Let's go to Amazon.com and let's search for an author named Radia Perlman. And here is her famous text, famous text, interconnections, bridges, router switches, and internetworking protocols. And Radia Perlman invented spanning tree protocol. And this was published in 99, this second edition. It would be really interesting to see when the first edition was published. But uh, pretty cool stuff. <laughs> Look at this quote. Anyone who wants to learn more about how the internet works or networks work, this book is a must-have. Yeah, I would say so. Reading this book is as easy as reading a novel. Now, her daughter, Radia Perlman's daughter, wrote a poem about Spanning Tree Protocol. And uh, someone actually, I think the daughter, plays guitar or something and set it to music. Let's, let's YouTube that. So, Radia Spanning Tree Protocol poem. And just to set this up a little better, so it's uh, Radia Perlman on the piano. Wow, that's pretty cool. Didn't know she could invent key internet work protocols and play them on the piano. Pretty cool. <laughs> There you have it. <laughs> so, pretty amazing stuff. Oh, that's so funny. My dog was just howling in the next room. Yeah. Anyways, uh, that is Spanning Tree, folks. And I hope you enjoyed that presentation. And boy, oh boy, critical, critical stuff for us to understand.